So in this video, I wanna talk about ground fault circuit interrupter outlets, or GFCIs, or you might have heard, heard them called GFIs. So this is what these outlets look like. And even though they look pretty similar besides the buttons, they're also very specific. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a load side and a line side, and we'll discuss what that means later. So these outlets are required in a lot of different places around your home, specifically where there's gonna be any type of water like in a bathroom or around a kitchen counter. They're, all, they're also required out in a garage and anytime you put an outlet outside, it has to be a ground fault circuit interrupter outlet. Something that you've, you've seen them mounted on the outside of a wall where they have the cover on them. The outlet inside there should be a ground fault circuit interrupter. So to describe how these ground fault circuit interrupter outlets work, let's start with your panel box. If you've seen my previous videos, you can see kind of how these circuits work. So you have your panel box and you have your black hot wire coming from the box to an outlet, light switch, some device. And I'm gonna use blue instead of the typical white Obviously, it's going to be hard to use white on the board. So we're going to have our neutral wire that goes back up to the panel box. So basic circuit theory, the circuit has to be complete. So through this circuit, the flow of electrons should be the same. The power should be the same. As long as this device is hooked up properly and working properly, the circuit has the same amount of current flowing through it in every place. So how a ground fault circuit interrupter works is it monitors the current on one side, on the hot side, and it monitors the current on the neutral side. So if you have a device plugged in, right now with nothing plugged in to the outlet, there's not gonna be a complete circuit. The circuit's not complete yet. But let's say we have a toaster. And it's hooked up to the ground fault circuit interrupter. Now we have a complete circuit. Actually, let me add a line here. So this is the cord. Obviously, the cord has two wires in it, or three wires if it's grounded, to go up to the ground fault circuit interrupter. So we have power coming out into the hot terminal, down to the toaster. And then we have the neutral going back up to the neutral terminal and back to the panel box. So as long as we push this button down to make the toaster work, we have a complete circuit. So let's say you push the toaster down and everything's going fine, your morning's going great, and all of a sudden you accidentally spill your coffee on the toaster. So now your circuit is not only the circuit here, your circuit is also the coffee all over. So now the power is going from the hot down to the toaster and then some other place, hopefully not through you. But a lot of that power is not making it back through the neutral back to the panel box. So what this ground fault circuit interrupter is gonna say is there is an unequal amount of current coming through me and so it's going to trip. And when it trips, it just cuts power to the circuit. And it cuts power to the circuit almost instantly so you don't get shocked. So on a ground fault circuit interrupter, it's gonna have the test button and it's gonna have a reset button. So if the ground fault circuit interrupter is good, hopefully you didn't get electrocuted because the circuit tripped out and you spilled your coffee on the toaster. So once you get that mess cleaned up and you wanna go back to making toast, what you can do is go back, as long as everything is good, hit reset, and the circuit should reset. If it doesn't, then obviously there's, something, there's power going somewhere else that won't allow it to reset. So the test button is there so you can mimic having some sort of issue with the ground fault circuit interrupter. They recommend that you test these ground fault circuit interrupter outlets every 30 days. I don't know anybody that's gonna go mark it on their calendar. Good job if you do. So you just go hit the test and it's gonna mimic something happening like you spilling coffee on a toaster or something. 
something that's went wrong with the circuit. It's gonna mimic that, kick power out, and then you should be able to reset it with no issues. So as I mentioned earlier, the GFCI outlets have a line and a load. So if this top is our line, what that means is, these are the two screws that are gonna accept the wires from the panel box. So let's draw the black wire going to the gold screw, and this blue wire going to the silver screw. So if you ignore these other outlets here, if this is the only outlet on the circuit, this is how you'll hook this up. Nothing will get hooked up to these bottom screws. So I've had some people reach out to me asking me, can you just use ground fault circuit interrupters for every outlet in the house? And my answer is yeah, but these ground fault circuit interrupters are 20 to $30 a piece. These regular outlets are about $6 a piece, five to $6 a piece. So there's a way to hook this up, hook up the circuit to where you can actually protect these other outlets with a ground fault circuit interrupter where you don't need to put in those outlets, the ground fault circuit interrupter outlets all through your house. So ignoring the other two outlets, at this point we have a ground fault circuit interrupter protected circuit. So let's extend this circuit to these other outlets that aren't ground fault circuit interrupter GFCI protected. So if we have a line at the top, this bottom screw, this bottom set of screws are gonna be our load. So if you're super rich and you don't care about spending 25 to 30 dollars on a ground fault circuit interrupter and you want to put them all through your house, what you'll do is you go from the load up to the line and you'll continue doing that with every GFCI outlet. I don't agree with doing that. This is gonna work just fine. Okay, so let's take our GFCI circuit and let's extend it to the other regular outlets. So we'll go from our load side over to a screw, over to a gold screw on the next outlet. And we'll go from the other gold screw over to the gold screw on the second outlet. Then we'll take our neutral, and we'll go over to a silver screw, then we'll come out a silver screw. So right now, if you follow the path, we've extended the circuit to these other outlets. So what this means is, is Everything in the circuit is now protected. So now your little brother walks in with a knife, butter knife hopefully, and sticks it in the outlet. Sticks on the hot side of this outlet that is not a ground fault circuit interrupter outlet, but it's within the circuit. So he sticks a knife in there and almost instantaneously, he doesn't get shocked. The ground fault circuit interrupter says, hey, something's wrong somewhere in this circuit and it still trips. So this is the circuit that I had up on the board. So this circuit is actually live. I'm wearing little gloves, try not to get shocked. It's gonna be okay, nobody panic. So right now, you're gonna see that the light's on. So if we hit the reset button, the light goes off. So we can hit the trip. Light comes back on. Let's just plug this tester in here. So now, if I hit the reset, you see the light came on. I don't know if you can see it. The light came on in this other circuit. So let's go ahead and test again. Light goes out. So you can tell that we've made a complete circuit. So in my last video I mentioned this outlet tester and you can see that it has a code or a bunch of codes on here to show if your wiring is done correctly and if it's not, these, these lights will light up relative to what's wrong with your circuit. 
But what's also nice is it has this little button. And what that button does is it mimics something going wrong with your ground fault circuit interrupter circuit. So, let me plug my tester back in here. So we're going to reset. Now our lights come back on. So right now, our circuit's wired correctly based on the codes, but let's trip it. Lights go out over here, and your circuit, and your ground fault circuit interrupter out that tripped as well. So where a circuit like this would be beneficial is, you can start, say, on a countertop, and you can put this ground fault circuit interrupter in first, obviously coming off from the line, and then your load wire goes out to subsequent outlets. So it's gonna save you a bunch of money. And these can also be done in a garage. I'm gonna use them in the garage. So I'll put this in first, put two or three outlets afterwards. You're allowed up to 10 outlets on a circuit or maybe your area, maybe it's a little bit different. I'm only gonna put about four or five, maybe five at the most outlets on one circuit because some of the things I'm gonna have plugged in are, are pretty high. They're gonna draw a lot of amperage. So I don't want to overload the circuit. So in the bathroom, so you have a pretty big counter with double bowl sinks. What you can do is put this in first and put one or two outlets after and not have to spend a bunch of money. And this is gonna work just the same as if you were to put ground fault circuit interrupters in each outlet, There's or in each box. There's absolutely no difference between running all of these outlets and using just regular outlets. So I didn't draw any ground wires, but obviously there's ground wires in the circuit. I just thought it'd be way too busy, so I just left them out. But in the regular outlets, there are these little copper tabs that connect the screws on either side. I've never had an issue with these ever going bad. Um, I've heard that they're rated to carry the current through. Other people have said that they're not. So. What I do, and I, I've done this with the lights as well, when you saw how I ran the wires in other videos, and I picked them off so there's only two wires coming out of the box to hook the, or two wires in the ground coming down to hook the light up. What you do is you pigtail everything together so you're not relying on these tabs to go through to, to complete the circuit. So I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about ground fault circuit interrupter outlets and how to hook them up how to save yourself money by creating a perfectly safe circuit using regular outlets when they're hooked up properly. I, and also keep in mind where these ground fault circuit interrupters need to be installed. You certainly don't wanna do a project and then maybe get ready to sell your home and then have to go back and change some wiring out. You obviously wanna do it right the first time, but also just for your own protection, make sure you do it correctly as well. So we appreciate everyone who has subscribed to our channel and all those of you who have liked and commented on our videos. We greatly appreciate that. We love interacting with you online. We hope to put out a lot more videos to help save you money and to share some of the experiences and some of the knowledge that we have. We certainly don't know everything, but uh, we're certainly perfectionists try to do things the right way. So hope to see you in the next videos. And once again, thank you.